Hello and welcome. I hope everyone out there is having a happy Sunday. In today's video, we have some pretty surprising updates regarding the next stimulus package and next stimulus check. Also, we have some more comments from McConnell about what we can expect with the next package. And I answer some of your guys' questions regarding the stimulus debit card, paycheck protection forgiveness, and the unemployment programs. Before I get into it, I'd like to remind everyone that if this channel hits 100,000 subscribers by June 6th, I will personally donate $1,200 to a charity or a cause of this channel's choosing. I mean, I'm even open to going out and doing something like donating to essential workers or something like that. So if you want to help out, all you have to do is click subscribe. All right, moving on, we have some updates regarding the next stimulus check that were a little surprising to me. So we have Trump, the Fed, and many others who are slowly more and more supporting the idea of another direct stimulus payment to the people. Well, believe it or not, some Democratic members are actually starting to oppose the idea of another direct stimulus payment. Democratic Senator Ben Cardin, a member of the Senate's Finance Committee, said he wants to see the next round of C-word <laughs> relief to be more narrowly targeted and focused on individuals who have been impacted the most by the pandemic. He said, and this is a quote, um, I'd like to take a look at all the aid that we provided and get good economic information on the value from the point of view of our economy, but more importantly, on the fairness to the people who are really hurt. So Cardin said the direct payments made more sense a few months ago when the goal was to get money out the door as quickly as possible. But now, as states are allowing businesses to reopen around the country, lawmakers should look at who will need the relief the most in the coming months. I mean, that's a fair point to get funding to the people who need it the absolute most. Um, Democratic Senator Ron Wyden also said there's a little bit of debate over whether another round of checks should even be included in another relief bill, in the next relief bill. Wyden said that he would back another round of direct payments, but they are not at the top of his priority list. And Senator Wyden was quoted saying... I would support additional payments as well as fixing problems with the first round of payments like the exclusion of dependents and citizen children of immigrants. My top priorities are tying expanded unemployment benefits to economic conditions and providing more help for the smallest of small businesses. So Senator Wyden was the person who proposed the sliding scale unemployment benefits for once the current PUA expires July 31st. This is the proposal that would provide additional unemployment benefits to individuals ranging between an extra $100 to $600 based on each state's unemployment level. I have an entire video on that. If you want more information on that proposal, you can check it out. It's on my channel. And then we also have Mitch McConnell, who was very recently making some comments about the next stimulus package. Some of them I think that you're going to really like, and some of them you may dislike or completely disagree with. So first, he stated that if another relief bill goes through, it will be the last relief bill. I suppose this comment doesn't come as a huge surprise due to the fact that this next bill has been such a huge fight to get anything agreed on. To be honest, this point though, is only valid so long as the economy gets better. If the economy stays the same or gets worse, worse over the next like six to 12 months, yeah, we're gonna have another bill. It's gonna be absolutely necessary. So that's with the expectation that things will get better relatively quickly. Next, he stated that the next package will be written by the Senate and supported by the Trump administration and have input from the Democrats in the House. <laughs> this is pretty crazy that it even needs to be said. He's basically just saying, guess what? 
We're actually going to get everyone's input on this bill and work together. You'd think that'd be obvious. <laughs> he again states, moving on, that he will not support a bill that doesn't increase liability protections for doctors and businesses as they reopen. This is really no surprise either because this guy says that basically every single day. <laughs> and then the next part, which was the most surprising part, McConnell said Congress would help those who are still unemployed. But he criticized the $600 per week federal benefit set to expire at the end of July, which he says in certain cases led to beneficiaries receiving more money than they would have on their previous paychecks. So I'd like to break this down. Even though he said this in kind of like a negative context, in a negative tone, I am looking at this and I actually believe that it's great news. He's basically saying, yes, people who can't find employment will get help, but what we end up seeing will likely not be the same $600 per week program that we have currently. I'm glad to see that. I'm, there, there has to be some way to both help people who simply can't find work anywhere and limit the number of people who are trying just to make an easy buck off the program and trying to stay out of work, basically. And then finally, his last comment stated that they're taking a look at providing additional assistance to states and municipalities. This is in stark contrast coming from the guy who just like a month or a month and a half ago wanted every state with budget issues just to go bankrupt. So he's open to change. We've got to give him that much. He's open to new ideas. Things change. He's willing to take a look at the whole picture. I got to give him that much credit. So moving on to some of your guys' top questions. Um, let's see here. All right. Jeanette Hauser asks, if you own your company, but it's just a company name, can you still file for unemployment? So I'm going to have to make a couple assumptions here. I'm assuming that this means you've just registered a company with the state, but you haven't actually earned income or filed taxes under this business yet. So the guidelines are kind of vague here, but taking a look at the ruling, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be in the same category as someone who is like an independent contractor or sole proprietor filing for PUA. A note here is you won't be able to get regular state unemployment unless you were an employee and either lost your job or lost wages. The self-employed and contractor allowance is for pandemic unemployment insurance only. All right, moving on to the next question. Nancy Palmer asks, uh, if my money is in my account, will I get a debit card too? You will only receive one $1,200 stimulus payment either by direct deposit, paper check, or the debit card. You won't receive $1,200 in every form or anything like that, one $1,200 payment. And no second stimulus has been approved yet. Just to clear some more confusion, this debit card is not a second stimulus payment. It's still the first one and it's just for the people who have not yet received it yet, they might receive a debit card. There's a lot of mites there, so you know, it's, I'm working with what we got here. All right, next question is by updates on CH in life games. That's the whole username. <laughs> he asks, will we get a stimulus debit card if we have a bank account? Well, this looks like another example of the IRS saying one thing and then something else entirely happening. They say it's only to go to people either without bank accounts or without access to banking or things like cash checking services. However, I've already been told from people who have bank accounts or have accounts like a, a, a account where they receive their um, SSDI funding into electronically, they have received debit cards. So. Yes, it's possible that you could receive a debit card even though you have a bank account, even though you file your taxes electronically. They say that you won't, but it's happened to people. So 
make sure that you uh, look through your junk mail and uh, yeah, you might get a debit card. There's a bunch of mites again. All right, moving on to the next question. Patricia Dement Morris asks, I'm a little confused. As a realtor, independent contractor, I only have payroll and expenses. My eight weeks are expiring. This is for the Paycheck Protection Program. I did not get enough funding for the 16 to 24 weeks. How does that work for us? So this comment is in reference to the house passing the extension of the Paycheck Protection Forgiveness window to 24 weeks from eight weeks. This still needs to be passed by the Senate, so it's not officially in law yet. But this would allow businesses to have more time to spend the loan money they already received. This change wouldn't really do much for a single member business because your loan would be based on only your payroll or your income. And in that situation, there would never be a point in you lowering your payroll during the eight week period. So this change more helps out businesses who have multiple employees and have slowed down in the current period compared to whatever period they use to calculate their loan amount. So this would give those businesses more time to spend the forgivable loan that they received. All right, here is another question about um, the Paycheck Protection Bill just passed in the House. DCG asks, does this mean more opportunity to spend Paycheck Protection Funds within the 24 weeks, or do we get more funding so we are covered for 24 weeks? So I kind of just answered this, but your funding amount will stay the same, but if this passes through the Senate, you'll just have more time to spend the funding you already received. Either way, it's a wonderful change if you ask me. All right, next question. This might be the last question. Uh, Kuki Martinez asks, I'm confused, I'm self-employed, with just me as an employee and I filed for a PPP loan through my bank and they only gave me a thousand dollars. Is this forgivable or do I have to show proof of my expenses? So there is just so much confusion around the PPP loan. My first comment here is I have a 20 minute video that covers everything you need to know about paycheck protection loan forgiveness. So watch that video if you received Paycheck Protection Loan, it'll clear up so many questions for all of you. I'll have that linked in the description of this video. And then to answer this question, yes, it is forgivable, and yes, you will need to provide proof for forgiveness. You'll need to provide documentation and the forgiveness application. For self-employed people who don't run a payroll on themselves, this will go off of your earnings and receipts of your expenses. So make sure you have detailed books and detailed receipts of everything you're spending your money on. That way you can ensure you receive loan forgiveness. And uh, yeah, that was the last question I have for today. If you have any other questions that I haven't addressed yet, feel free to comment them below and I'll do my best to answer the ones that I think need more context. Until next time, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.